Hi everyone. Let's take a look at the bike. Get some shoes on first though. My feet are pretty tore up. So there you go. The toe there. And there. And then on the inside, it's pretty gnarly on the inside with blisters. Uh, legs are pretty bruised up as well. Uh, let's check out the bike. Yeah, actually, let's go outside. Let's go to the rain. Let's go outside. Oh, wet. So there's some damage here. The tip over. These are pretty gnarled up in tip overs. These are really gnarled up from tip over. This is from the crash. Right there. Of course, the uh, X head is scratched up on the side. The bar is really scratched up. And we have a scratch brake lever. And the, uh, of course, the machine arm motor hand cars are completely off on this side. Got some dead bugs. Very dirty, dirty lights. A very dirty windscreen. All right, let's go back inside. All right, that should work. I know I'm a little bit um, <laughs> wet after that. Hello, everyone. It's Adam here. Uh, you're gonna see this tonight, um, and the reason for that. I'm gonna go sit on the beta over here. <laughs> let's give the beta a little bit of love. Uh, the reason for that is because I can't put out a video for you. Uh, immediately of my, there we go, trip, because there's just too much. There's too much video. Uh, 600 unique clips, uh, only 400 gigabytes, believe it or not, but that's mostly partly due to the GoPro Hero 6's HEVC compression, as well as the iPhone 8 Plus's HEVC compression, which is like a quarter the size of um, a 4K uh, 60 FPS video had you have shot it. Uh, with the old GoPros, the old iPhones. So the HEVC makes it a lot smaller. It's about, probably a terabyte of actual video. Uh, I'm doing something unique this time, which I'm going to assemble everything into one video, uh, chronologically, you know, assembled by, by day. And then uh, including all the footage from BB-8's video uh, as well. So he sent me all of his iPhone clips and his GoPro clips so they're all going to be interlaced. I'm going to I'm going to caption them because they are copyright. They're owned by him. He granted me a license to use them, but I should still give credit to him and uh, link to his YouTube channel if he ever creates one. So you're seeing this kind of as a like a prologue to the videos because I don't know how long it's going to take me to get it done. Not only that, I have 550 pictures off the Canon 5D SLR. I need to edit uh, and put on a Flickr. So it's a lot of video. Please be patient. Um, a minor decompression of this trip, for those of you that don't want to watch hours and hours of video, is that uh, we drove 3,600 miles. I think he drove 3,900 miles, so just shy of 4,000. Uh, I crashed once, a very serious crash, um, that luckily resulted in no injuries, just to some replacement parts. The people that make these parts have already stepped in to really, like, they've impressed me with this stuff. And I'll make separate videos about that kind of stuff. Uh, the gear held up really well. Um, we just had a blast. It was seriously a blast. I, I had so much fun on this trip that, um, you know, I'm looking forward to the next one. I think 10 to 12 days is about the most I can take. This was a... Um, 13 day trip around day 10. I started kind of feeling like I'm ready to be home and like BB-8 said, I kind of beelined it uh, home and uh, he's right. But um, you know, when you're, when you're a thousand miles from home and you're heading that direction, you just kind of get into your head that oh, I can do this in two days. And we did, we did it in two days. It was a lot of fun. It sounds like I'm, I'm depressed. I'm not, I'm just trying to like, assemble everything we experienced in those many days. I mean, like, you know, no cell phone service, um, no wall chargers, very few times to wash clothes, to um, sit down and cook a meal, uh, lots of uh, outhouses <laughs> to pee in, 
Um, lots of shitty tasting water. Um, not many close calls with fuel, except for today when I had zero mile range getting to the gas station because I pulled into my house yesterday with two miles range left. I put my liter fuel bottle in there and then drove to the gas station with BB-8 behind me, which took some dirt roads. And then I'm like, oh, I have no range left. I got there just fine. I ended up putting 7.7 .7 gallons in. So I still had 0.3 gallons uh, left in the tank. Uh, yeah, just, just a wild, wild, wild trip. Uh, the scenery up there is beautiful. Uh, the tires I picked were the wrong tires. Um, it rained on us four days. We had one day with like 40 mile an hour wind gusts were throwing us into oncoming traffic. We saw a bear, but no moose, lots of deer, uh, lots of varmint, you know, that kind of stuff, snakes, that kind of thing. Um, I just, you know, in some ways, a lot of my aspirations for the GS mods were kind of for this trip. You know, you have to, I had a goal state in mind and I would say the the modifications I did to the bike were overkill for completing this trip, but they also, some of them hindered me in that they add a lot of unnecessary weight. Uh, when I crashed at 55 miles an hour on, on uh, gravel um, into a cloud of dust, the Machine Art Moto hand guards broke. The right one broke. Uh, they were replacing it for free, which God bless them. Uh, and that hand guard saved my brake lever. I was still 2,000 miles from home. My brake lever was heavily scratched, but it was not broken. Uh, Alt riders, crash bars, amazing. The Shimizu Moto X head, cylinder head guards, perfect. It completely saved uh, my cylinder head from JB Weld, even though I had that with me. Uh, the Jesse box, break the bike here. <laughs> the uh, Jesse box uh, got me home. Still held water. In fact, BB-8, you know, told me, dude, you don't need to replace this. Just keep running it until it breaks. He's probably right. But I still went ahead and uh, asked them to send me another one anyway. And they're going to charge me full price for that box. But again, it's, I'm not the first customer. It's not under warranty. It's damaged. I get it. Um, still have an issue with the clear water lights. Uh, the sergeant seat and the seat backrest felt great. But the backrest kind of, kind of eating underneath the seat. So it caused some premature wear. Then leather, I'm going to send the picture to the sergeant so they see that. And... Um, I should have brought more water and less fuel. The charging system I had was great. I The SAE plugs with the four USB ports in the back, I would charge my camp, my headlamp, and my light at, during the day along with my 48,000 milliamp battery packs. And then at night I would use those to recharge my Senna, the GoPro, the cameras, this gimbal, all this stuff was kind of charged at night. So that was a fantastic thing to have. Um, and I left it plugged in all the time and never killed the battery, which is amazing. It would pretty much get down to 12.6 uh, volts and then would stop charging the um, the uh, the power cords until I restarted the bike and got it to 14.2 again. It was a good time. Oh, yeah, $300 worth of fuel, uh, 3,600 miles. Definitely sore. But I got back on the bike today and rode to work today. So, you know, it's not, it's not like I'm over motorcycling. I got right back on 12 hours later and rode to work. <laughs> um, yeah, I crashed. I crashed on this thing. Going 55 miles an hour. It's the Climb Adventure 2011 suit. On my right side, you see anywhere? Let's see any seams broken. Uh, slid on my back. You see anything broken back there? <laughs> slid on my elbow. This is Pine Sap but all the seams are good. Everything's perfect. It's the way it was whenever I bought it. The very, very back, nothing, just perfect. Uh, I also slid on my Badlands 2018 revision pants. Same thing, right side. Lots of pine sap, but uh, they were even unhinged, they were even unzipped. And uh, you know, they just came out flawless it's almost like it never the crash never happened at these pants uh i also crashed not using my adventure my climb adventure gloves but i was wearing my dakar pro gloves and where's the right hand this is the right hand i slid on this thing here nothing beautiful my helmet on the other hand where's that helmet where'd you go it's over here sorry everything's just a mess right now i'm still unpacking um the helmet on the other hand has this damage the impact you can see all the marks there and the scuffs 
So I just need to go to Shelly for an inspection. I want them to give me the the A-OK -okay that everything on it is fine. And the Forma Adventure booth, which now have about 30,000 miles on them. Uh, right side, all the buckles were good. I've just got a little bit of peel back here on the back rear there, and a little bit of peel back on the um, the front. But, you know, you can see where it's scuffed, but it's totally fine, man. So, I, I you know, I, I couldn't have asked for a, uh, let's see if I get this facing me again, for a better outcome for that crash. So, the next few days, you're going to see a video hope it's one video it might turn into seven videos of the uh the trans labrador trip is this bad for lighting i'm sorry guys and then uh i've got videos coming out for the beta a lot of modification videos of stuff i already have on hand uh i'm not exhausted i'm just still kind of decompressing from all of it i got back to 179 emails uh, and that was with me triaging some every four or five days when I found Wi-Fi. Only talked to my girlfriend twice in those um, 12 days, which she kind of didn't like. The inReach worked really well. Everyone was able to track me. I was able to message my girlfriend after the crash saying I was okay. And sleeping was fine. I never got tired of camping. I got tired of the setup and the takedown every day because it was about an hour of work per day focused on basically assembling my campsite and breaking it back down again. Um, I carry too many clothes. Six shirts, six undies, six pairs of socks was too much. I could have gotten by with two of each because I did laundry every four days. And what else was extra? Uh, BB-8 and I each bought, brought like air pumps, tool rolls, JB Weld, um, tire patch kits, uh, jet boils, uh, headlamps. Uh, we, bought, we brought a lot of stuff that was duplicated of each other. So we could have really simplified that like immensely. And that would have saved us each about half of our panniers worth of junk, which means I could have put my clothes inside of the panniers as opposed to strapping it to the top in a waterproof uh, compression sack. Other than that, though, I mean, it was, you know, both of us kind of agreed that we didn't know how the trip would go. So it was nice to have extras. But, you know, next time if we travel together, we know our skill level now and we would just, you know, not duplicate our, our, our stuff like that. I wouldn't have brought my Kermit chair either. Everywhere we camped had a, a, a table. So I didn't need the Kermit chair at all. I used it one night, I think, when we went to someone else's campsite. So I'm sorry, I'm sitting there rambling right now, but but basically I'm looking at Final Cut Pro, which I'll put a little clip in here after, of, of everything that right now is transcoding. Uh, it's a lot. Actually, I'm not going to do that because it's going to require me importing this into Final Cut Pro, and that's going to only make add more time to this. So let's not do that. Let's just put this right on YouTube. Uh, it, it's just... I have a lot of work to do, and I'm already back at work. I didn't take the rest of the week off because I, I want to keep some of my paid time off hours saved up for uh, Heather and I doing something later in the year. Um, it was a lot of fun. I recommend it to everyone. I really do. If you if you can get the bike up to New Hampshire, Vermont, stay with me for a couple of days, and then head off north, it's a wonderful trip. On the GSA, you don't need to bring fuel with you. On the GS, you should bring a couple liters with you. Um... And, and just go, just make it happen. Uh, I think we spent in total about $1,000 from the two of us. No, each $1,000 was fuel, lodging, and food, and everything else, about $1,000 for everything for between both of us uh, for, the, for the, the week and a half. Um, $300 was fuel, about 600 went to um, food and snacks, water, those kind of things, and, and the, the rest went to um, Camping. We were splitting. We were splitting everything. So every room we rented, there was three people splitting one room. So that was thirty dollars a person or forty dollars a person. And then camping was always twenty to twenty to forty dollars a night per site. So we would split that down the middle. All right. I'm gonna it for now, though. I, I think I've rambled along enough. I'm I'm so happy to be home. It's raining. I'm after four days of getting rained on. I was completely sick of being rained on. Like really fucking tired of it. Gore-Tex is awesome. I, I felt bad for BB-8 because he was constantly putting his outer layers on that were waterproof over his suit. He has a BMW Rally suit. It's not waterproof. It would get wet and then hold the water in. So he had an oversuit that he was wearing, which he was miserable in because it was holding all the, um, some raindrops there. It was holding all this, this condensation in. Um, 
I wish Tortex tank bag was waterproof, but it has a liner that you have to buy separately. And in my crash, the tank bag did not fly off, believe it or not. Our problem about crashing on the bike was that I had to remove all the shit from the bike to pick it back up. It was too damn heavy to pick up. And I'm an expert at picking that bike up five or six times a day if I have to without any getting tired. But I mean, that all this stuff was on the bike. Um, there we go. So we got tools, the lamp, tank bag. Um, all this stuff here was on the bike. Plus we had the, uh, the water and the fuel was on there. Um, lots of stuff. Oh, and all this stuff too was in the top, top case. So we had lots of things in there and, um, plus me. So it was, it was a lot of stuff when it did, when it ended up falling. Get this straight up there again. I'm stopping the video though. Long enough. You guys have been really patient with me. Um, I'm happy to be home and I'm happy to start planning the next trip. I don't know where yet. Heather has asked me not to go anywhere next year for two weeks because she wants to go somewhere with me for two, for two weeks, but she doesn't want to take the bikes. She doesn't want to be on a motorcycle. So maybe next year is a cruise or something. So I'm glad to be home. Hey, and uh, not this weekend, but next camping trip. <laughs> we still got like four or five BMW events this year to go to. Um, and I'm, I'm stoked. I'm trying to get DV8 back out here for the motorcycle, for the BMW MOV, uh, Green Mountain Rally. Uh, the hamster ride's coming up this year. We've got a, I've got a ride probably on the beta in a few weeks of the, uh, the NH Flatlander track with Schmokel and a few other guys from Adventure Rider. A bunch of overnights uh, camping on the woods. The, the year is not over. Oh, real quick. Let's see how the, um, the Pirelli Rally Scorpion SDRs did. I'll close with that because these things are... Well, I guess they're about 4,000 miles on them due to the, uh, I put them on and then I went on the trip. So let's check out that rear. Oh, it's still raining. There you go. So here's my finger. So still about 500 miles left in that rear. I can probably get 5,000 out of it if I'm careful. So that's the status update of that. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.